You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. Famous last words from the dark night. Today they ring true for Joe Biden. For the last four years, the US president has slammed Donald Trump, criticized his aggression and panned his arrogance. But now it looks like Biden is taking a page out of the Trump playbook. He's becoming the man he opposes. It's election season in America. June 27 saw the first presidential debate. Biden went against Trump and he faltered badly. Ever since then, Trump has gone silent. He's basking in the success, but Biden is on a media blitz. He dialed into a morning radio program. He gave an interview. He attended multiple rallies. He addressed a NATO summit. He's even choosing spray tan. Tonight, he will address another press conference, his first solo one since last November. So Biden's strategy is simple. To him, offense is the best defense. Look, I have a cognitive test every single day. Every day I have that test. Everything I do. Would you be willing to have the independent medical evaluation? Watch me between, there's a lot of time left in this campaign. It's over 125 days. So don't the answer, make a decision. the right answer right now is no, you, you don't want to do that right no, now. I've already done it. But looking more orange is not buying him sympathy. There's dissent in his party. The Democrats want him out and they're trying to achieve it in two ways. One is direct confrontation. Around a dozen Democrats have asked Biden to step down. This includes Democratic congressmen, senators, high profile donors and even Hollywood actor George Clooney. They're not meeting about the bush. They've told Biden to resign. You know, the, the fighting spirit and pride and courage that served the country so well four years ago helped Joe Biden win will bring the ticket down this time. He, he just has to step down because uh, he can't win. But some others have taken a different approach, like former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She's a senior Democrat, an influential voice in the party. Pelosi is trying to appeal to Biden's rational side. She hasn't asked him to step down. She says he should make a decision soon because time is running out. And looks like she even lost her cool over it. Do you believe you should run for election? I'm not. I'm not speaking English to you. I'm not going to be making any statements about any of that right now in the hallway. She's upset, but she's also right. Time is running out for the Democratic Party. They're facing their biggest crisis ever. We are in the month of July. The election is slated for November. So there's around four months to go. If Biden has to step down, it must happen now. The Democrats will need the time to mobilize their resources and rally behind the new candidate. But it's also unprecedented. Incumbents don't usually step down. It's very, very rare. They're certainly not forced to step down. The first example is Harry Truman, the 33rd U.S. president. In 1945, Truman was then President Franklin D. Roosevelt's vice president. He was the VP. After Roosevelt died, Truman took over, and he served out that term. Then in 1948, he contested the election, and he won. But in 1952, Truman was done. He had already been in power long enough, he thought. He did not want to continue. Technically, he could seek another term, but Truman stepped down. The Democrats went into a huddle. They picked another nominee, but he lost the elections. The sec second example is Lyndon B. Johnson. He was the 36th American president. He became president in 1963, but his fate was sealed in Vietnam. The war made him lose support, so Johnson stepped down. It was another scramble for the Democrats. They fielded a new candidate. Again, they lost the White House. So history does not paint such a good picture. Two Democratic presidents, both left under pressure, and the party lost the White House. But here's how this one is different. Truman was tired. Johnson was politically battered. None of them was too old or too unfit to contest. And there's another thing to consider. Truman stepped down around March. So did Lyndon B. Johnson. Basically, the Democrats had time to recalibrate, but this time they're pressed. So right now they have three options. Number one, Biden contests the election. He loses against Trump and the Democrats lose the White House. Option number two or scenario number two, Biden steps down. They choose another nominee. Elections happen and the Democrats get a fighting chance. They may still lose the White House, but not without trying to keep it. And option number three, 
Biden refuses to go, his party forces him out. It leads to an ugly scenario, making both sides look bad, Joe Biden and his party. So they must make a decision and do it fast. The Democrats say they want to save American democracy. But before that, they must save their own party. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree, a News 18 network initiative. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison LaGrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.